How you move your hips means more than you think. Welcome back. This is Grown and Healthy, the channel where we explore self-improvement through movement. Now, when walking or running, it is very important how our legs can go back behind us. A lot is depending on our range of motion in our hips, ankles, and feet. And your restriction may be the limiting factor in your movement options. There are infinite actual variations, but most can be split into one of these three categories. First, the neutral way. This is when the foot sort of goes straight back and the thigh is pointed straight forward the whole time. This way is not as common as you think and people who think that they are actually performing a neutral step path will find that they are not once they review recorded footage of them actually in their gait cycle. We often misinterpret what our bodies are actually doing from lack of interoception, which is a skill in itself. Next is with external rotation. This is when the foot goes behind you, but the thigh rolls externally as the foot and leg go under and behind your body. This can rotate the foot inside the shoe towards the pinky side, the lateral edge, with each step, and it will place more pressure on your medial arch, leading to symptoms like hyperpronation. You combine this with narrow shoes, and that will equal bunions. For most people, this is a developed habit and not innately how our mechanics work. We have overridden our movement code with influence of our culture. I mean, just think about what footage comes to mind when you think of a cool person walking. Things like man spreading is just disengagement of your internal rotation in the attempt to look cool while ruining our capabilities. We all want to look cool and to belong for survival purposes, I understand, but we do that by mimicking patterns thought to go along with the current norm. Along with wearing the current normal shoes, this ingrains a limited range of hip internal rotation. Long term, this can ultimately limit how much your leg can actually travel behind you as external rotation has a limit in the motion. As the femur goes behind the pelvis, it is closing space between those bones. Whereas internal rotation has almost no limit because it pulls the femur away from the pelvis, increasing space between those bones. You will often see this position of internal rotation in a forward split. Next is internally rotated. This way is when the foot goes behind you and the thigh rolls internally as the foot goes back. This is ideally what we're looking for as when it's combined with the joint movement of the ankle, midfoot, and big toe working in unison as they should, the leg can go back behind you to a larger degree, not only providing more stability, but also a longer follow through, producing more force emitted from our end range hip extension. It also helps peel the foot off of the ground while splaying the toes further apart, rather than jamming them together when you are externally rotating. Notice the difference in my toe alignment on push off in these three different patterns. This is one of the reasons why all the progress of training your foot mobility will revert once it is paired with the wrong hip movement. Now, we all have video cameras now, and as you walk, you may be able to observe if your leg is rolling externally or internally with each step. And even if you aren't honest, the wear pattern on your shoes are a good indication of how you're walking. This pattern may be the hardest for you to develop and is key to developing the ability to walk in the proper forefoot manner. By developing your hip internal rotation, you will have solved, for most people, your flat feet. You know, when I receive questions about the outside of the foot hurting when walking, it is from a lack of hip internal rotation. Your pain, sitting, running, squatting can all be traced back to the lack that you have in internal rotation. And if you are 20 something who doesn't think that it's a big deal right now, 
this dysfunction will catch up to you eventually. I mean, I'm 44 years old and I sprint at the track on a regular basis. Yet, I rarely see people in their 30s sprinting. And when I do, they perform with the proper movement patterns. And so this is an indication of the pattern leading to longevity. And I know why. In your quest to look normal, which is a common critique to my videos, you are now suffering in pain along with all the other normal people. We see this as the rise of athletes that are injured in non-contact situations are from this lack of hip internal rotation. Because they too, with the supposedly most advanced level of coaching and training, are being taught improper movement that are at odds with their innate design. I mean, have you seen most athletes' feet? They're mangled. They're paying a high cost to be paid millions to promote these foot mangling shoes. You'll find once you develop the proper mechanics that every activity will be easy and pain free. That your ability to run, jump and play will be limited only by your endurance and not your pain tolerance. Now if you understand this and you would like help with your movement mechanics, stronger feet and to live a pain free and active lifestyle. You can contact me at grownandhealthy.com or email me in the description below. I provide consultation and training programs specifically based on pain-free movement. This has been Grown and Healthy, the channel where we explore self-improvement through movement. Thanks for watching.